The Kingdom in Seattle, where Denver and the Seahawks are deadlocked at 10 apiece. And welcome back to Seattle, everybody. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with you. Glad you could join us on a Sunday night. The play that tied it up in the first half. David Craig with a touchdown pass after a good drive by Seattle. Craig's had a good first half. He really has. He's done everything he's had to do. They've had a nice running game to keep the uh, balance of attack. But the thing that David Craig on this does on this particular play, he looks off to the right. Now, Tommy Kane is to the left side. He has enough time by the offensive line to be able to come back and fire the ball into Kane, who'd beat Wyman Henderson. And one of the things about uh, David Craig, he has had a propensity. Boy, has That's he a ever. big word. I Boy, know he's that. third all time in the National Football League in fumbles, and uh, uh, you think you have a reason why I, he has dropped the I ball. think I have unlocked the key. Right, show me. I'm going to show you. Right there, you see where my pinky is right here? See how it's wrapped over the laces of the ball? That makes it very difficult for somebody to hold on to it. So when you load it, it comes flying out. If you just adjust it, as you see he will do, adjust that pinky back onto the laces, it gives you a tighter grip on the football, and when you bring it back, it doesn't go flying out. Now, if you take a look at David Craig, see the position of his pinky? He's moved it back. I talked to him earlier this week, actually on Friday, we had a conversation about it, and it looks like it's gonna give him a more secure grip. Whether or not it helps him throw or not fumble, only time will tell. Seattle to receive the second half picked off Jefferson inside the five out to the 30 yard line he's brought down there and Seattle will have a first and ten Dan Reeves has been driven crazy in the second half by this team they have been a terrible second half team particularly in the third quarter they have blown countless halftime leads and it's one of those things that a coach simply has no answer for well, Wayne Fonts had an answer for us last week. Don't take him in at halftime. Let him stay out on the field, run a few drills, and maybe it's unprecedented, but it doesn't give you that uh, locker room doldrum. There you see the record. First and 10, Seattle center, the deep man in the eye. Play action by Craig. Throws for Tice incomplete. Brooks was out there covering him. Take a look at the halftime stats. Passing yards, Denver's favor. Rushing yards, as you might expect, with Seattle's propensity to keep it on the ground in the Seahawks' favor. Only the one turnover in the first half. The statistics tell you it's about a 10-10 tie. I mean, everything is very balanced. It should be an even ball game. Time of possession, very balanced. And that's the way these teams are. When you compare their numbers all year, what we've seen in the first half is the way they play. One thing we didn't see there, three ejections in the first half of play. Fenner. Huge hole up the middle. Atwater brings him down at the 40-yard line, but it's a first down. And Joe, let's go back to what you said earlier in the ball game. If you have both of the safeties playing in a two-deep zone and the corner's out wide, that middle is wide open. Well, you just don't get that extra person. We've seen Nesby Glasgow make some plays for Seattle. Here's Carl Mecklenburg moved back inside, but John L. Williams manages to take him on. Now, in Carl's defense, he has trouble with both his knees and will probably have surgery on at least one at the conclusion of the season. Center, seven carries, 41 yards, had a career high the first time his team's met. Play action again by Craig. Fletcher comes, loose ball. Craig, third on the all-time list. So much for theory. I'm never going to talk about a guy <laughs> again. All you other guys watching this game tonight, I promise, any quarterback, I'm not going to talk about anything. This is just a good defensive play. They just come around. Fletcher manages to get a hand on it. Holmes manages to knock it down. Seattle doesn't lose it because of some heads-up play by the offensive line. But uh, that just happens sometimes when you get in trap. Oh, come on. <laughs> Look at me. Don't blame me. Timing is everything, isn't it? <laughs> There they are. Dan Fouts and Roman Gabriel are really hoping to get off that list. They hope David Craig has a few more. Now he's at 101. Craig with time. Throws over the middle. Almost intercepted by Dennis Smith at the 45 intended for Blades. Smith had one earlier. 
Dennis Smith just pursuing the middle. He just he's just reading the eyes of David Craig. Now this ball is actually thrown behind the receiver. And that's he's done that. He did it to Scancy in the end zone. Of course, he did it to Blades when he was moving around. And on this particular pass, he's been a little bit behind. I think he is the most hot and cold quarterback who has played for quite a few yards in the history, or quite a few years in the history of this league. When he is hot, he just jumped in the one. All out blitz. Craig avoids it. Dumps it to Williams. Heads up play. And Williams to the 46. It'll be shy of a first down. But Craig showed the mobility to get out of trouble and the smarts to dump it off to John L. When we visited with John L., he said, as of late, they've taken him away. They've double teamed him with linebackers and linemen with a defensive back and a linebacker. The last couple times he's caught the football, it's been through scrambles by David Craig. He's just found an open place for him to get the ball. Rick Donnelly, who has not had a good night, as Clark waits at the 11. Nice kick this time. Clark catches it. And it's down at the 12. Might have been well advised to let that one go. A return of four after a 47-yard punt. Donald Miller made the tackle. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Volkswagen. Experience the European driving experience we call Farfic Nugent, only in a Volkswagen. And by AT&T, the right choice. And the Space Needle in the background there, one of the must-see tourist attractions if you're in the great Northwest. Denver takes over at its own 12-yard line. 12-20 to go third quarter, tied at 10. Humphrey. Seattle does a nice job of stringing it out, and this time, Glasgow did not get caught inside. Made the tackle as he tried to turn the corner. Take a look at some of the individual stats from the first half. Humphrey with 41 yards rushing. Jackson, big first half, four catches, 55 yards. And Dennis Smith with a nice defensive performance for Seattle. 72 yards between Fenner and Williams rushing. And Williams also five catches for another 39 yards. Well, that's what you expect out of John L. Williams. And this is what you expect out of John L. Williams. Humphrey on the draw. Robinson came up to make the tackle, shy of the first down at the 20. Robinson, a six-year veteran. Glasgow was also over there, a 12-year man. So far, this game has gone... A I think a little bit conservative at, from a Denver standpoint. I, I talked about before, we can get down around the goal line, putting the ball in the hands of David Craig. Here, it looks like they've been backed up so much, they just don't want to take a chance on throwing the football and putting it in John Wellway's hands. Third and two. Wellway fighting the noise, gets it to Humphrey. And Seattle was waiting on the draw. Jacob Green and Nesby Glasgow and Tony Woods and a lot of other Seattle defenders. Well, what happens is they bring guys from both corners, both the outside receivers. There's Glasgow on the lower left side. He comes hard around the corner. Now, Bobby Humphreys takes the handoff six yards deep and winds up getting tackled uh, a yard behind the line of scrimmage. So what happens is you get that pinching from the outside and it's a very difficult place to pick up one yard when you don't have a lead back. Mike Horan is on to punt to Chris Warren. He is the fourth leading punt returner in the AFC. Averaging 9.4 returns, so Seattle should get good field position. High floating kick by Horan. Warren wanted to make the fair catch and couldn't. What a huge bounce. This is a 20 yards difference if he makes that catch in the air. They'll spot the ball at the 20, a 60-yard punt, including the roll. We're still tied at 10. Winner. 10.05 to go, third quarter. Denver and Seattle tied at 10. Let's update you a little bit on the playoff picture. First in the AFC, Buffalo clinched the Eastern Division today. Miami will make it as a wild card. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Houston all still alive in the Central. 
and we'll have Pittsburgh and Houston for you next Sunday night. The Raiders in Kansas City can still win in the West. And I stand corrected on a scenario for Pittsburgh. There is a way that they can make it as a wild card, but I'm not even going to bother telling you about it because it would take too long. Seattle takes over at the 20. Cincinnati would have to lose to Cleveland next week. Fenner struggles forward a little bit. Simon Fletcher makes the tackle. Or Seattle would have to lose one of its two remaining games. There's a flag down on this play. And a hold will go against the Seahawks. This is their worst field position of the night. Five. Holding. Offense 85, 10 yards, still first down. The tight end, Ron Heller. Best way to get a hold of Simon Fletcher is to grab him. See how his hands are outside? That's what the, that's the official sees. As long as that hand's on the back, that's when they throw the flag. If he'd have had it out there and moved it back inside, probably wouldn't have called it. First and 20. John L. Williams. Looked like Ron Holmes got a hand on him first, and then Simon Fletcher came up to make the tackle. One thing that uh, Dan Reeves talked about when we had a chance to visit with him is he said, we have to get, we have to stop the running game. That's going to have to be a, a big part of it. And secondly, you got to be able to get some bigger people up front. He needs to get some help in that defensive line. Holmes doing a good job tonight. And uh, he can't afford to have Mecklenburg helped off. No, he came out holding his wrist. Second and 18, Craig goes to the shotgun. Dumped it off to John L. Williams. Nearly got to him for a sack. And Williams will stop for a loss at the seven by Atwater. Simon Fletcher over on the right side does a good job on Mattis. Manages to get that arm over. Once the defensive lineman gets the arm over, they can go pretty much the direction they want to and have the offensive lineman off balance. We asked Simon Fletcher, since the playoffs are not in the cards for Denver, what he was playing for, and he says, well, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes next year, and I don't plan to be one of them. Third and 22 for Craig. Craig with a happy feet in the end zone to Scancy. Steps over one tackle to the 15. Scancy not known for his power running after he makes the catch. Couple of nifty strong moves. Well, I wouldn't qualify that as power running either. But nice. I'll give him a break. Well, it was nice up and down and moving the feet around. I mean, that was a pretty good move. Well, he's going to have a memory this year of that catch he made against Kansas City yeah. to win it at the last play of the game. They'll have to punt on fourth and 15. Those are the kind of things you, you take with you for the rest of your life. One big play in a game that, that keeps your team alive and wins it. Yeah, and you hope you hang around this league long enough to get one of those. Donnelly, low line drive kick. Clark should have a good shot at returning this one. Lost his balance and went down at the 45-yard line. Brought down by James Jones, the backup fullback. Return of four after a punt of 44. Seattle, Denver, and the Seahawks tied at 10. And of course, the third quarter has been something of a nightmare for Dan Reeves this year. Look at this. 30 points in the third quarter. Three touchdowns and three field goals all year long. One against Kansas City, one against Buffalo, one against San Diego last week. Here's a guy who also might want to think about doing something with his team at halftime. You know, leaving him out, letting him scrimmage a little bit, not even taking him off the field. Denver with excellent field position, taking over at its own 46. Humphrey, here comes the reverse. Jackson. Elway trying to throw him a block, but Jacob Green made the play. What a play by Jacob Green. What a lousy block by yeah. John Elway. I mean, not exactly the, the most stellar of efforts to try and throw a, a body at him. We talked about it earlier in the first half. You get the Seattle defense flowing. Now you come back. Jacob does an excellent job. He's not allowing Jackson to get outside. 
and he uses the funneling of his uh, back to the inside for help and manages to make the play by himself. They've run that play four times before this season and gained 30 yards on it, but they lost two this time. And Elway has not thrown a bomb that I can remember. Rifles this near side. Johnson makes the catch at the Seattle 40. That will be a first down. Dwayne Harper made the tackle. This one comes off a of play action. You don't see John here doing a lot of straight dropbacks, a lot of play actions, because Bobby Humphrey comes out of the eye. This is the end of it. He just sets and fires it. He has such great confidence in what he wants to do with the football. That one he throws perfect. The way a quarterback reads it, if the defender's inside, you throw the ball outside. Defender's outside, you throw it inside. 11 out of 17, 113 yards for Elway. Play action. A lot of time and overthrows Jackson, who's inside the Seattle 30. Patrick Hunter was on the coverage. Derek Hayes, uh, backup defensive lineman for the Seahawks. Tragedy in his family earlier this week. His brother Herb passed away in Tampa at the age of 27. And he said he will be playing the rest of the season in the memory of his brother. Just got back in yesterday. Our uh, sympathies go out to he and his family. And that of Fred Washington, the Bears, who was tragically killed earlier this week. Second and 10. Blitz, and Elway sacked at the 50. Woods got him, but it was David Wyman coming straight up the middle that flushed him out. Seattle making the decision. It looks like the uh, Broncos want to throw the ball right up the middle. Dave Wyman sees the center block off. Bobby Humphreys tries to step up and help, but by now, John Elway's been flushed, and he's getting the corner support from Tony Woods. Third and 20. Only the third sack of the year for Woods. Elway can quick kick. Another blitz. Throws short Johnson. He's taken out of bounds at the 40, well shy of the first down. Patrick Hunter made the stop. That's why you blitz in... in long yardage situations you want the quarterback to throw the blitz break off because you know he's ha has to get it off it's going to be an eight nine yard completion you make the tackle it's fourth down and ten make them punt and that's exactly what they've done with 517 to go third quarter still tied at 10. Mike Coran with the best average in the league probably should have gone to the Pro Bowl you know he kicks outside and this is nothing against Stark he's a great kicker and he's going to the Pro Bowl but the guy kicks outside in all kinds of elements, had the best average in the league. And the best net average. Net average, and, and uh, is going to sit home. Trying to kill this one inside the 20 in a pretty effort. Haran can crunch it, and he can do that. They down it at the 9. 31-yard punt, no return, and Seattle will have to start at its own 9-yard line. Our score holding a 10 between Denver and Seattle, 4.49 to go, third quarter of play. Tomorrow's headlines brought to you by Levi's Dockers. The Bills, as you may have seen earlier, clinched in the AFC West. Fine job by Frank Reich. Houston, or AFC East, rather. Warren Moon, devastating injury to uh, Houston. Brooks had a tremendous game on the ground for Cincinnati. The Saints kept their playoff hopes alive, beating the 49ers. The Chiefs clinched. Steve DeBert playing with that broken finger. Troy Aikman knocked out by a separated shoulder. Jeff Hostetler did a good job for the Giants as they locked up a first-round box. John Elway is trying to get some breathing room down here. Moves the pile out to the 15. There's a flag down on the play as Dennis Smith made the tackle. Well, Seattle's see, losing momentum here, Yeah, they, they started on the 40. Their first, I mean, the, the way they started this, these possessions, they started on the 40, then the 30, then the 20, now the 10. Now they're going back to the five. I mean, they really can't go much further. Scores 10 to 10. Got everything in even numbers. Holding. 87 offense. 
half the distance of the goal line. Still first down. Mike Tice, the big tight end that they called back into service. They called him back with the intention of having him be a backup, maybe hang around a couple of weeks. As it turns out, he's given them that strong side running attack. Uh, Ron Heller molded, noted more for his receiving ability. Travis McNeil still learning how to be a run block. First and 15. Fenner on the deep handoff. And after the opening series of the ball game, Denver has done, outside of a, a couple instances, a very good job at shutting down the Seattle running game. Well, they, you know, and the thing is, is now you see Atwater up around the ball. They're getting the safeties more involved. They're defying Seattle to try and throw the ball outside to their wide receivers or try and get the ball up the field anyway. They're just saying, look, if you want to move it, you're going to have to move it in the air. Wade Phillips knows his personnel. He wants to help his corners out, and they play the two-deep zone. I think Seattle's got to put the ball in the air. Second and 13. They split the backs this time. Greg says John L. out on the pattern. Just got rid of the ball. Almost a sack. Greg Cragen, the nose man, undersized at 256, fired in there and nearly got the two points. Oh, and he can't believe it. He just, he just knows he had him. Just about got him. You'll see it come from the right part of your screen. Craig stepping up in the pocket. Now he just manages to get the ball oh, out. Oh. That knee's down. You bet you it is. The knee was down. And that should have been a safety. No wonder Craig was upset. Whoa, and no wonder Craig went, whoa. And now they're, it they're will not, be reviewed. They're not going to like this. This place Pass is play is being reviewed. See him pointing? Replay official is Bill Fetty. Well, <laughs> that's what's known as studying. Well, it was pretty clear from that first angle. Here's now, now, same shot. Watch his knee. Watch his right knee. Now, the question is, is the ball out of his hands? Got to be conclusive. Is the ball out of his hands when, he, when the knee hits the ground? Here you go again. Right knee. Right knee. Can't tell He's, from that. I don't think you can tell from that. I angle. think from the other angle, you can see that the knee does hit just before the ball comes out. What they have Upon review, the play stands as called. Oh, It'll be oh, third oh. down. Well, I think it's, it's hard to tell, Michael, whether the knee is actually in the ground. You can't tell the, the depth. The way we're looking at it, I'm not certain whether the ball was out or not. I mean, right here, you're going to see that's fast time, but now they have the ability in the booth to go click, 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 click one frame I at think a time. they needed one more click. Okay, so we don't agree. The fifth the team. Four-man rush. Craig again under pressure. <laughs> Holy cow, looked like he threw that under somebody. That's going to call the safety. What they're going to do is take it over on the safety. Well, it's payback time. Well, you know, I mean, he, he underarms this. He, what he basically does is get it out with no intention really to complete it. And the question is whether or not he was avoiding a sack. I think it's a heck of a smart move. He feels the pressure. Now he just underarms oh. it. He had Warren Powers right in front of him. Yeah, but you should be able to throw the ball away. He's not, I mean, the thing is, he just underarms it and gets it out. Now look, throws now, the ball away. On. Okay. He's not trying to complete that pass. I am a quarterback at heart. What can I tell you? I mean, you know it. David knows it. So even the people that are booing knows he wasn't trying to complete it. But it's two points. I hate the rule. I really, I just don't like the rule, but I, I still think he was trying to get rid of the football. Oh, he was trying to get rid of it. All right. Chuck Knox does not care for the call, but Denver is up 12-10. Oh. Chuck is really hot. He sees a chance for a playoff, maybe slipping away here. I 
find that a very intelligent play, Mike. I don't care. Well, I think it is a very intelligent it's, play, it's but I think he was throwing the ball away. But you're allowed to throw the ball away. But they think we've had how many quarterbacks go down in the last three weeks? Would you rather see quarterbacks get hurt, or would you rather give them a chance to throw away the football? But they're just going by the rule that says if I you think... throw it away to avoid a loss, it's intentional grounding. And intentional grounding in the end zone is a safety. You're right. The rule is correct. But I don't necessarily feel like it happened in that instance. Uh, two points anyway. Great kick. And Denver will have great field position at its own 46-yard line. We shouldn't argue like this two days before Christmas. You know? We're not arguing. We're debating an issue. ESPN has a big bowl week coming up beginning Thursday with the Liberty Bowl. Ohio State against the Air Force at 8 o'clock. Then on Friday at 7.30 Eastern, the All-American Bowl, Southern Mississippi at NC State. Saturday, BYU with Heisman winner Ty Detmer against Texas A&M. Another 7.30 Eastern start in the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. And then the Mazda Gator Bowl, Tuesday, January 1st, 11.30 a.m. Eastern, Old Miss against Michigan. The crowd showing its disapproval. Elway throws, dropped by the fullback, Kerry Porter. Hit him right in the chest. Porter's only caught three balls this year. Cut by the Raiders. And caught his only three passes against the Raiders. He's in there as a starter. Melvin Bratton in Denver's doghouse for being overweight. And uh, Dan Reeves doesn't like that. He got rid of Orson Mobley earlier in the season. The veteran tight end because he was overweight. Well, he has certain standards that he wants the guys to abide by. And if they don't, he has the ultimate choice whether they play or not. Second and ten. Movement on the line. The right guard, Doug Wydell, jumped when Elway was trying to tell Keith Kartz, his center, the audible. Ball start, number 67. Still second down. That is their fourth, Ill fifth illegal procedure penalty, and the crowd deserves 25 yards of credit. You see him turn, now he leans over, and he's just trying to tell him something, but of course, Doug Guadell can't quite tell whether it's a signal or not. He hears a noise from the quarterback. Melvin Bratton, the man we just spoke of at 225 pounds, is in the Denver offensive backfield. The numbers on Elway, very low yardage. Elway throws to the sideline incomplete. There is a flag down in the Denver backfield. Nesby Glasgow on another blitz chasing Elwood. And Denver doing what they had to on second down. They went to the shotgun to avoid another penalty. Nesby Glasgow has become the assigned individual, number 22. He's responsible. If these backs stay in, he's going to take Elway. He'll get help over here, but this time he runs him down and goes wherever he has to go. Nesby just hanging around, waiting for John. Closes the gap. Does a good job avoiding the block. And that's all he's responsible in doing is not allowing Elway a chance to get up the field. The holding call moves it back to the 31-yard line where it's second and 25. You see the job by the secondary. I mean, a lot of people covered. Well, the crowd's really gotten back into this after the safety. Wood can't get him. Over the middle at midfield, incomplete. Well, the Denver sideline wanted a flag because it looked like Harper may have gotten there early. John Elway just scrambling around, making everything happen. As long as he's moving. Oh, yeah. There's no question. That's pass interference. But you're not, you, they're not going to review. I mean, it's not no. reviewable. It doesn't matter. Intended for Ricky Natiel. I mean, he's over the top of him big time. 
when Elway is just running for his life now. Third and 25. And Elway just let the play clock run down. It's now going to be third and 30. But that's not a bad decision. Some guys would have taken the timeout. You might need the timeout later. What's the difference between third and 25 and third and 30? I think it's the difference between a quarterback that's played a while and a young guy who says, oh, gosh, second down and 25, we got to make a play. You're absolutely right. What he's going to try and do here now is pick up 15 yards to give Horan a chance to punt the ball and get Seattle deep. See, he wants it, then he says, no, 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 John, don't do it. That's the word that's coming out of his mouth. Don't. You betcha. Thunder under the dome. No way on a plan roll. Deep over the middle. Intercepted by Robinson. Eugene Robinson to the 13. There is a flag down on the play. And another fight. One of the cardinal rules is don't throw it late over the middle. He did. Unless you're John Elway. Actually, he's got the receiver open. He just throws this ball. No foul. He'll take a look at this. With Elway rolling out the Seattle defense, watch what these guys do over there. Even though Elway's going to roll to this side, they all sit at home. The receiver's going to go down. There's going to be a big hole in the middle. He just overthrows it. Look at the discipline on the back side. Now, there's the receiver in the middle. He's open. Just makes a bad throw. And a great job going up for the ball and keeping your balance by Eugene Robinson. Vance Johnson tries to catch it. Robinson goes up, makes a great interception, and stays on his feet. His second pick of the year in Seattle in business now at the Denver 12 with 2.31 to go third quarter. John L. The cutback hasn't been there since the first quarter. He gets to the 10 where Warren Powers makes the tackle. Defensive line at Denver, they're really keen on John L. I mean, when he's in the backfield, he's either going to be a receiver, very much involved on first and 10, or running the football. Look at that. Second half, 26 of the 30 turnovers. 12 of Elway's 13 interceptions have come in the second half. It's been a nightmare. I mean, there's the numbers. Won the first, 12 the second half. And this is a team that has won three of four AFC titles, and Chuck Knox seeing his fortunes turn around after the safety. Second and nine. Fenner. Seattle being very conservative here, knowing that a field goal puts them ahead. Yeah, but what, what sense is there to play for a field goal with a minute and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter? I mean, put you ahead. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't I don't buy it. I just I think they had him spread out the first time. Put the ball in the hands of David Craig on first and ten with a chance to throw or run or scramble around. He's done an excellent job with it. And we have a Denver player slow to get up. That looks like Mecklenburg, and it is. He came off earlier holding his wrist. And Denver has also been hurt at linebacker this year, especially with their inside guys. Munford was hurt. Scott Curtis was hurt. As we talked about earlier, the Seahawks spent a lot of time this week working on plays inside the 25-yard line. They haven't been able to get the production. There's only 22 TDs, 10 field goals, 39 possessions. Ranked 21st in the league. They're two for two tonight. Usually teams that don't run well are the ones that have trouble inside the 20. Seattle runs well. Why do you think it is? I think because of the way they call their plays. I think they try and run the ball. Now, all of a sudden, you put your quarterback 
in the worst possible situation. The defense knows that he's going to throw the football, so they play pass defense. They're willing to give, they're willing to give you five yards and let you kick the field goal. You come out of here with a field goal, Denver's got to feel like, great, we did our job. Minute 21 to go, third quarter. Denver leading 12-10. Seattle must win tonight and next week to have a shot at the playoffs. Andre Townsend in on the defensive line for Denver on third and nine. Craig sidearms the blades at the one. It'll be a first down. Blades hasn't been very involved tonight, but he was that time. Boy, he comes up with a big catch on this one. And what a throw, sidearm to get it around somebody. David throws a lot sidearm, and this is built for him. He slides so well in the pocket. He's looking for Blades all the way. He sees him, look at that, gets it around the rush. What a great catch, great catch. Avoided Atwater and Smith, and there is Brian Blades out of Miami. His 41st catch of the year. First and goal. Center. Touchdown. Benner, who was so productive earlier in the year, scoring had a drought and has now come back we always talk about getting under people in this case seattle just built some walls and they let fenner pick his way through going right up the gut they come right up the middle they create that bubble brooks can only manage to get a forearm on fenner and can't keep him out norm johnson for the point after Seahawks have taken a 17-12 lead. Fenner now goes to second place in the NFL in touchdowns. Only Cleveland, Gary, and Barry Sanders in front of him. It's a pretty elite company. Yeah, it sure is. But well, Cleveland, Gary, I mean, you really have to take into consideration fumbled quite a bit as well this year and he's in John Robinson's doghouse the guy could hold on to the football he'd be in there a lot more behind that offensive line the Rams have which perennially have been at the top of the league uh, you know, number goes up into the 20s easy Fenner is one of those guys who had an awful lot of trouble earlier in his career trouble with the law arrested on a drug paraphernalia charge arrested on a first-degree murder charge was in jail for quite a while was let out after they said it was a case of mistaken identity. And apparently he has his act together and is doing quite a job for the Seahawks this year. You like to see people make the most when they get a second or a third opportunity because a lot of guys get the chances and don't cash in on them. With Kurt Warner getting older and being released earlier this year, they needed that back to be able to play in the halfback position. They had the great fullback. They needed the complement. Clark and Ezor back to take Norm Johnson's kickoff. Got all of this one. Clark three yards deep. He'll keep it there. And five seconds remain on the third period clock. The well, Denver, Denver has kept up with its third quarter scoring I was just average. Say they got this. two points this quarter. They're thrilled. I mean, they're thrilled to get after the first quarter. They can't get this one over quick enough. What well, that safety fired up the crowd, didn't it? And Santa. And me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were fired up already. <laughs> Clarence K bottled it. Glasgow comes up. Gang tackle, gain of about two. And that's the end of the third quarter. The crowd on its feet here in the Kingdom. Happy to see their Seahawks on top. 17-12. Patrick, Joe Theismann with you from Seattle. The Seahawks have taken the lead over Denver as we go to the fourth quarter. 
Denver has had, or Seattle has had five games this year that have been decided on the final play, and there's not one thing that stands out about this team. It is a team. No, it's not. This is not an individual team. You look at the Eagles, you say Randall Cunningham makes it go. You look at Denver, you say uh, John Elway makes mm -hmm. it go. With this football team, they rely on big plays from the offense, big plays from the defense, and big plays from the special teams. Denver will keep it on the ground as they take possession after the kickoff, and Humphrey crosses the 30 to the 31-yard line. Denver needed that for two reasons. Momentum had swung against them, and also to quiet this crowd down so that Elway can communicate with his teammates. Humphrey again. Denver playing some power football, and they get it out to the 37-yard line where Joe Keane makes the ankle tackle on Humphrey. It takes a lot of pride to come out and play hard when you're in Denver's situation, having been favored by a lot of people to go back to the Super Bowl, and they're four and ten. Humphrey on the top. First down and more. Humphrey to the 49-yard line. James Jefferson made the stop that time. We've called Nesby Glasgow's name quite a bit, getting involved in the in stopping the run, blitzing and, and putting pressure on Elway. Here, you don't see a safety involved at all. They're running through the linebackers, and all of a sudden, downfield, Jefferson makes the play. I think that Seattle has to do basically the same thing that Denver has to do, get the safeties up and run support. First and ten. Humphrey again. Not this time. Waiting for him, Cortez Kennedy. This year's Seahawks team has responded well to their adverse situation. Here's what Nesby Glasgow has to say about that. This team is just resilient. Uh, no matter what happened to us, no matter what situation we've been put in, we've always showed up, uh, you know, I guess Chuck Knox uh, cliche, uh, with our lunch pail and hard hat. Uh, you know, we come to play regardless of the situation we put in. We're put in, you know, whether we're down by 20 points or down by two points, we're going to be out there fighting as hard as we can. They'll keep it on the ground. This time it's Blake Gizor. Free agent rookie out of Michigan State, only carried 22 times coming into this ball game. Glasgow has done it for 12 years. A lot of people thought his career was over three or four years ago, but he's really resurrected it. Uh, he has, and he's just a great competitor. He said, you know, studying film of John Elway this week, he has noticed that Elway has become that competitor that everybody had seen him be in the last few years. Earlier this year, I think he was tentative all through their Super Bowl drive last year. We, we commented on the fact he just didn't look like the same John Elway. Well, he's back now and playing as well as he ever had. Elway, of course, uh, now more involved in the offense. He comes in with the uh, offensive coordinators and Dan Reeves to plan the game plan. No, 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 no. Don't. It's not, it, that's what people would think. No coach is going to let a quarterback come. And what he does, he comes in, looks at film, makes a suggestion here and there. No coach turns it over to a corner. But psychologically, that has been, been very good for John Elway. Absolutely. He feels like he's involved. Humphrey back in. Quarterback keeper for Elway. He's to the 40. That will be a first down. Take that one step further, Michael. He, by coming in on Tuesday and getting involved in the meetings, the coaches sit down. They spend a lot of time putting a game plan together. What Elway does, he comes in. He looks at film with Gary Kubiak. Both the quarterbacks come in, talk about to the coaching staff what plays they like. And as the coaches talk about what would the read be on this play? Now John's there. They can ask him, what would you read on that defense? Instead of having to wait till the next day. Right. Humphrey and Melvin Bratton are the backfield. Humphrey, Cortez Kennedy makes the tackle as he gained one. Kennedy at 6'3", 293, very quick. They've got him in there at this point in his career after he missed training camp to play the run because, as Joe said earlier, he missed so much time on the techniques of rushing the passer. 
Eric Hayes, the other rookie, is the guy they really liked as the pass rusher. Here's the Broncos in the second half, and they have not been able to do anything with the ball. Their defense scored the only points on the safety. Second and nine, and they complete the ball to the 30. That should be another first down. Clarence K. Well, you watch a game, and you, I know as, as, as I'm sure people sit at home, and as we watch it, you get a feeling somebody's in a rhythm. Right now, Denver's in a rhythm. Pick up four or five yards, break one for eight or nine, quarterback drop backs, one, two, three, four sets, fires, completion. They're in a groove right now. measure for the first down the nose of the ball had to be close to the 30 and it is and it is a first down of course they're down by five nearing Treadwell's range at this point the field goal from here would be 47 yards but it's 17 12 Seahawks and they need a win tonight and next week to stay alive in the playoff stage. they're currently seven and seven Humphrey goes seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Play action. Elway with the rifle, and Jackson lost it. Robinson couldn't hold it on the interception. That would have been his second after Jackson dropped what looked like a very catchable ball. You know, we were kids growing up. They used to have that bouncing ball, and you could sing along this one. Great play action to Bobby Humphrey. John hides the ball well from the defense. Now Mark Jackson, he just cuts this loose a little bit behind Jackson, but he still should have made it. Hit him in the knee. That's your, your finish batting it around. Now it's Eugene's time. And it just gets away from him. Follow the ball. Humphrey, they string it out again. Broke one tackle, but couldn't break the second of Tony Woods, the right defensive end. Tony Woods, we've called his name a lot tonight, making a lot of plays as well in the, in the backfield as well as downfield. You'll see him lower right side of your screen, number 57. Plays off the block very well. Almost overruns the play and one on Bobby Humphrey. Woods is a case of one of those guys who has really benefited from the switch in defense. He is a much better down lineman than he was the linebacker. The play selection on this drive, they have tried to keep it on the ground. But now they face the third and eight. That ball may have been tipped. And it's incomplete intended for Jackson. Treadwell comes on to try to cut into a five-point lead. It will be an attempt of 45 yards. He's hit from 49 and missed from 50. business people are. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by ITT Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. And by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. Downtown Seattle, all set for Christmas. And the Seahawks trying to get set for the playoffs. They are up by five, 17-12. They'll take over at their own 27. Center. Flag goes down as he reaches the 33. What would you like to see Seattle do at this point? I'd like to see them. They've run a lot of eye formation. I'd like to see them come out now and utilize the play action off the eye. If Denver wants holding, 54 offense, penalty is accepted, it'll still be first down. It's Grant Fiesel, the center. If Denver wants to continue to try and play with the two deep, take away the wide receivers, 
Take the ball to the running back. That'll free up John L. down the field a little bit. Also try and get the ball to your tight end against the linebackers. I think that's, that's going to be the easiest way to move the football. I don't believe they can pound it up in there, and they're going to come up now first and 20. Tom Catlin, the defensive coordinator, working on the sideline with his group. Well, Seattle needs only a field goal to have an eight-point lead. Craig Flush throws for John L. at the 28, but throws short. Well, when he gets in trouble, he will look for John L. I mean, he, he has a great comprehension of where everybody is, and now what he tries to do is if he gets in trouble, he knows that John L. is going to be someplace close by where he can dump the ball off. You mentioned earlier, Mike, about David Craig. When he gets hot, he you know, plays as well as anybody in the league, but when he doesn't get hot, Sometimes it can look real ugly, and tonight's one of those ugly nights so far. Had a couple of good moments, but on the whole, he's had some nasty-looking throws and now faced the second and 20. Craig hit just as he throws. Scancy can't get there at the 35. Corrington and Smith on the coverage. Mecklenburg was putting the pressure on. John Becker, the offensive coordinator, see Mecklenburg down, he said, you know, he hates to see Mecklenburg out there as a pass rusher. He'd much rather have Denver play him inside to try and stop the run and make tackles inside. He said he fears him most outside as a pass rusher. Mecklenburg has been a tremendous performer for Denver ever since he came into the league. Third and 20 here. Broncos to rush three. Craig down the middle, complete to Kane. The mark will be very important as to whether they have the first down or not. And they are going to mark it just shy of the sticks. Dennis Smith made the tackle. A designed rollout. Craig will roll out to his left. They block Mecklenburg inside. Kane pushes it up the field. Now he looks for the hole. See how he looks around to find out where the defenders are? Nice job of just looking for that open space, a throwing lane for the quarterback. Fourth and a yard with 7.55 and counting. And Donnelly will come on to punt to Clark. End over end, short kick. But it gets about Clark on the hop. Back to the 28-yard line, buried there by Seattle's special team. A return of five after a gain of 39. Trey Junkin gets credit for the tackle. 7.40 left in Seattle. The Seahawks lead the Broncos 17 to 12. Here's how we got there. Treadwell hits from 49 yards out to make it three to nothing. Norm Johnson countered in the first quarter to make it 3-3. Three -three. Denver got the game's first touchdown. Bobby Humphrey from one yard out. It was 10 to three. Seattle tied it on a Dave Craig to Tommy Kane pass in the second quarter. Third period, the only scoring for Denver. The defense got a safety when Craig was called for intentional grounding in the end zone. And then Derek Fenner has put Seattle back on top, 17 to 12. That brings you up to date. We have 7.40 to go in the ballgame. Denver takes over at its own 29. I think they have to open the ball up and put the ball in the hands of the man that can win it for him. That's number seven. Got Jackson to the near side, Johnson to the far side. Throws to Johnson. First down at the 42-yard line. Wyman makes the tackle along with Jefferson. That is not a bandage on his left arm. That's the defensive play in the signal. All he has to do is look down there as a reference, and he knows what he wants to call. Humphrey and Bratton are the back. Elway throws to Kay, and the tight end to the 49-yard line. 
Wyman makes a tackle again along with Joe Kane. You just don't see a lot of that in the Denver offense. They either run the ball and then try to get the ball to the wide receivers. Clarence Kay's only had 22 receptions all year. Now, Chan Gailey, who is the offensive coordinator, will be leaving the Denver Broncos and going down to Coach Birmingham in the New World League. So, and he, and there are a number of, of other offensive coordinators in the league that will be looking around as well. Of course, Mike Shanahan, who used to be the offensive coordinator, is on the staff. Here's Humphrey, a gaping hole up the middle to the Seattle 40-yard line. Brought down that time by Eric Hayes and Eugene Robinson. Quarterbacks tonight. Not a lot of yards, huh? No, and, and really the sacks and the interceptions even out. And, and this is why you get the kind of game where we have. Neither one of them has taken over control of this football game. And Elway has that capability. Humphrey, 92 yards on 24 carries. One for the 100-yard mark. Instead, he'll go backwards and Woods cut him down for a two-yard loss. Woods has had a good ball game tonight. He's been all over the field. He's making tackles on the right sideline. That time he goes to the left sideline. He's put pressure on the quarterback. They try and block him. Here he comes on the outside. Stand-up linebacker. Playing the position there that he used to play as a linebacker. They call it a loss of one, so it's second and 11. Block becoming a factor. 5-14 and counting. Elway airs it out for Jackson. He drops it. Jefferson may have gotten a hand in there. They had the coverage they wanted. It was a three-deep zone. Jefferson, he moves to the inside. Jackson takes him inside. Does a nice job. Gets away from Jefferson as he tries to grab him. Just looks back, concentrates. Absolutely oh. flat. Dropped the ball. That's the second one he's dropped tonight. Fine throw by Elway. Put it right where he had to. Right on the money. Oh. Got to catch those. Third and 11. Elway one hands the snap. Under pressure. Flag is down. So is Elway. Jacob Green, the other defensive end with another sack, will check the flag. They'll turn down that holding call and make Denver punt the football. Number 76, the far side. He gets the call. See that arm outside? Boy, he still can't hold on to Jacob Green. Green got held and everything else and still managed to make the play. And Green went for the football. Couldn't get hit. Took Elway instead, so Haran will come on on 4th and 19. Chris Warren waits inside the 10. and makes it at the six-yard line. So Seattle, after a 43-yard punt, will have to start from its own six with 4.45 left in the game. Bob, thanks very much. We'll be looking forward to that right after our telecast, and we have 4.45 to go in this game. Seattle taking over at its own six. Center. About the eight. Cragen was in on the stop along with Atwater. Yeah, that's what they've got to do. They've got to get the safeties out. That's the first time Atwater's really been around the line of scrimmage on first and ten. Um, most of the game, I mean, for the largest part of the game, he's been back. Uh, I just think they have to force David Craig to beat you. And there's certain things that you have to ask other teams to do. They have to ask Craig to put the ball in the air. 11 carries, 46 yards for Fenner. Well below the 144 game the first time he played this team. John L. Williams, student body right. Up 
to the 10, maybe the 11. Got a nice block from Brian Millard as pulling right guard. Randy Robbins made the stop. You see the clock, under four minutes. That's one way what you do to, you, to try and disguise the fact that you want to run. You spread everybody out. You bring your wingman in in motion. And basically, you call the Mike. You send suit and body right. Nice job by Lucas taking on the guard. Robbins comes up to make the play. Big third down here for Seattle. They don't want to punt out of this area to give Denver great field position. Third and six. They'd love to keep the clock moving with 322 left. Craig with time almost picked off. Would have been a touchdown for Lilo Lang. And he's out of the University of Washington. You can bet he has a lot of family and friends here watching this game. What mixed reactions they would have had. Well, he read this absolutely perfect. Dave Craig puts the ball on the outside, right part of your screen. He makes the throw. Lang just absolutely reads it perfect. Hits him right in the hands, and it gets away from him. Now Donnelly will have to punt out of the end zone. And Kevin Clark waits near midfield. Beautiful kick. Donnelly got all that one. Clark all the way back to the 37. 51-yard kick, six-yard return, and 3.01 to go in the game. Donald Miller again down on special teams makes the tackle. Let's update you on the NFC playoff picture. These are the division winners. The Giants and the 49ers will have first round buys. Chicago will have to play in that first round. And then in the wild card picture, Philadelphia and Washington are in. It's very simple for Dallas. If they win next week, go to 8-8, eight eight, they're in. If they lose, New Orleans can win, and they'll make it to the playoffs. Denver needs a touchdown. Elway to Clarence K. Got by Glasgow across midfield to the Seattle 49-yard line. Joe Kane made the stop. This will be a modified two-minute drill. What they'll do is they'll huddle quickly and come to the line of scrimmage. They won't go right to the ball. 235 in the count. Elway rifled that one, and Joe Kane got a hand on it. Looked like more like a chest on it and knocked the ball down. John just believes he can throw the ball anywhere. Uh, threw a great touchdown scrambling around last week that uh, that Jackson caught. Or, I'm sorry, shoot, Michael Young caught. Here he sets and fires and just tries to squeeze the ball in a little hole. Well, he's done it so often you can understand why he believes it. Sooner or later he's going to get older and know that he can't. And then he's really going to you know, make some, I think, good decisions. Third and three. Quarterback draw. One. First time they called it tonight. They call it on third and three. Quarterback draw. Nobody bought it. You got to figure that it's a good call because. Seattle's going to be back in his zone. Here they're in man-to-man. -man. I don't really think John gives us a chance. He doesn't allow the rush of the defensive line, so he really can't find a seam. That was almost like a let me get the ball, and I'll take off and try and pick it up. Five tackles tonight for Woods. They've all been big plays. Denver is going to let it run down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to go. Seattle 17, Denver 12. Fourth and seven. What do you like? I like Steve Sewell out of the backfield. I think he's got great hands and he should be isolated enough to get the yard. Elway over the middle and said it's young and he has the first down at the Seattle 44. And Patrick Hunter, who was in on the tackle, is down. It's interesting, Michael Young said that the big plays that he's caught, he's got to figure 30 or 40 percent of them have come when John Elway has scrambled around. He's a guy that he has confidence in. Lower left part of your screen, runs a post and hooks up. 
good positioning. You keep the defender behind you and the ball in front of you. And you were right about Sewell. John Elway was locked on him as he came out of the backfield, but he was covered. As, as he goes out, he takes you read it, whether it's zone or man to man. Mike Shanahan on the far right, Chan Gelly, the uh, man sitting to his right, or as you look at it, your left, going to be the head coach of the Birmingham franchise. Other assistants mentioned David Shula with the Cowboys, June Jones uh, in Detroit, Wade Phillips uh, here in Denver, names that have mentioned as possible head coaching uh, material for the new league. Patrick Hunter, the injured Seahawk, is out of the lineup. First and ten. Elway to the 40, trying to get to the 6, doesn't make it. Chased out of bounds at the 36-yard line, two yards shy of the first down, but it's a gain of eight. Certain, it, it's interesting, Elway and Cunningham both have developed skills where they'd much rather buy time running around than they would just flat take off and go. We saw Randall earlier in the game today pick up some big yardage against the Cowboys, but they both want to take it as long as they can to find a receiver to get to, and at the last minute they decide to go. The Seahawks may apply for an NBA franchise. All their games go down in the last two minutes. Second and two, pump fake in the bomb for Young. Intercepted. Picked off by Melvin Jenkins. It's a truly great play by Melvin Jenkins. He didn't bite on the pump fake. He went back and covered a guy who's got blazing speed, got his first interception of the year. That may be the play that we look back in two weeks that put the Seahawks in the playoff. Oh, it really is. Right down here, what's going to happen is Young's going to go down, do a little stutter step and go up. But this is the zone. It's second down and two. It's second down and two. You're on the 36. You want to give yourself a chance. You see the post and up move. He never bites. He does make a great play on the ball. Played in Canada with the Calgary Stampeders. Seattle has outguessed Denver's offense all night. They blitz when they didn't expect it. They play zone when they haven't expected it. 1.36 to go. John L. Williams just trying to work some time off the clock to the 23. Denver uses another timeout. Stop the clock with a minute 30 to go. A very happy Melvin Jenkins. I always say hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. And Mom, of course. Melvin Jenkins, you'll see him. Left-hand part of your screen. There's the pump fake on the quick post. But nobody bites. I mean, he's back there. He just does a great job of outrunning Young to the ball. Denver only has one timeout left. They can stop the clock after this play. Had the zone all the way. Fine job, fine job making that play. Hey, family, got one time out left. One thirty on the clock. Could be a great week for Chuck Knox. His daughter Colleen gave birth this week to a boy, Bennett Knox Este. And a win here would really cap it off. Fenner just wants to hold on to the ball. Gets up to the 24. Denver uses its last time out. Atwater makes the tackle again with 1.25 to go. And you get the feeling that this is going to go down to the last play again. Well, it will, but the thing is, is now you, you, you think about what you've got as far as time goes. There's how the rankings were, 83 through 89 for the Seahawks. The characteristic that they have developed uh, in the 90s is that they're ranked 24th now in takeaways. I mean, they just haven't done it a lot. But we talked about it earlier. They've come up with a big play here, a big play there. Special teams kept uh, Denver back. Their offense has moved the ball when mm -hmm. they've had to come up with the play. Defense making the interception. The owner of the Seattle Seahawks, Ken Baring, ought to be smiling. His team with a heck of a shot here to go to eight and seven. Made his money in real estate in California. Bought the Seahawks from the Nordstrom family. 
third and six. Fenner. Needed to get to the 30. They stop him at the 28. So Seattle will work all the time they can off the clock and then have to punt. Michael Brooks made the tackle. Denver's going to wind up with the football with about 22 seconds to go. Right now, it's in the 45-second uh, clock. And as it ticks down, they should get the ball back somewhere around 30, 25 seconds. Clark is waiting inside his 30-yard line, so Elway will get one more crack at it. Seattle just may uh, go for the delay penalty, well, take he, the every last second they can off it. And then once he hits the ball, it's going to be another five seconds, which will take Denver down to about 20 seconds to have it. There comes the delay call with 34 seconds left, and it will be up to Donnelly to get the ball out of there. Uh, Denver needs a touchdown. They're down by five. Right after our telecast, Sports Center, Bob Lee and Dan Patrick. And then we'll have prime time right after that telecast. And a conversation with the new Red Sox slugger, Jack Clark. Boy, all the free agent movement in baseball. Makes the football players absolutely, and I can tell Jack and all the other baseball players, you make the football players sick. A lot of dollars. Here's the pressure on Donnelly. Gets it out of there. Nice kick. Clark rushing up, trying to make the catch. and does on the run and got out of bounds across midfield. Nice job by Clark. Nine-yard return after a 36-yard punt. He did everything on that play. He made the catch to save the roll. Also saved the time. Got some yardage and got out of bounds. It was perfect. Well, And, and he's got 25 seconds. You've probably got enough time in my opinion, to take complete the ball 15 or 20 yards down around the 30, run up and ground it, and then have a chance to put the ball in the end zone with at least two plays. I'm looking at Denver to run off about three plays here. 17 times in his career, John Elway has brought his team from behind to win. Trips left. Up for grabs. Jenkins was the last guy that had a shot at it. Now we go back for a reload. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, I think they can have a better opportunity than just run that play with 25 seconds left on the clock. You've got 16 left now, probably going to get at least two more shots at a jump ball. But chances are Seattle's got, gonna, got as much of an opportunity to pick it off. Why not try and throw something to get a guy out of bounds and then throw the ball from the 25 or 30 yards. Well, they've really limited their choices now with 16 seconds left. Seattle has defenders inside the 20. Elway cranks it up again. Jump ball almost caught at the one. Either Young or Johnson got a hand on the ball after it was tipped. Unfortunately, John Elway's running out of arms. Okay, and I never thought I'd say this with John. The first one made it into the end zone. Watch how much he puts into this one. He turned and just, just like a shot put, throws that thing as far as he can. Now this one lands on about the four yard line. Look at that, little tip here, little tip there. Sharp Young almost had it. Had it. Well, Sharp I'll had tell it. you what would have been interesting he catches that ball at the one time would have run out in this game as it is they get another crack flag is down
They went for the tip play three straight times, and again, Seattle wins in a game that's decided on the very last play of the game. Take a look at it. They almost got it last time. This one goes up. Nice tight spiral up there somewhere as it comes down. Four Seahawks had a shot at it. Four Seahawks had a shot at it. Michael Young has the opportunity to come down with it, but they're offside. There they are, right there. There's everybody moving. See, he's moving towards the line of scrimmage. He had to be set or else continuing in motion towards the line of scrimmage. And it even looked like two guys were moving on it, too, and you can't have multiple men in motion. Unbelievable. Elway got all of this one. Yeah. It's he, about he, 66 yards in the he air. He put this lead at four Seahawks up for it. Michael Young does a great job of staying with it, but it's all for naught. John. Oh, no. I can't believe it. An unbelievable finish, and Chuck Knox, who, as we said earlier, has probably done the finest coaching job of his career. Also, he doing, knows the flags down doing too. Refereeing, right? Yeah. Here. He's right here. Don't worry about it. But he's still going to watch. And Ken Baring will live to fight another day. As Seattle has gone to eight and seven, their playoff chances are still alive. Once again, our final score from Seattle. The Seahawks 17, the Broncos 12. For Joe Theismann and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Merry Christmas from Seattle. Sports Center is next following this commercial.